society depends on oxygen. Not just as humans for breathing, but our industry as well. Oxygen is the fifth most used chemical in the world, and we use over 100 million tons of it each year. 50% of this goes into the production of steel, while the rest is used for making plastics, many different chemicals, for welding, and maybe most importantly, in hospitals, helping people breathe. Where do we get all this oxygen? Air. The fantastic thing around us that contains roughly 80% nitrogen and 20% oxygen. Our lungs are pretty good at making this oxygen accessible to us. But the industry doesn't have lungs. Instead, they use an extremely complicated and energy demanding process called cryogenic distillation, or very cold distillation. In order to turn air into pure oxygen, it needs to be cooled down to as low as negative 185 degrees Celsius. At that point, air turns into a liquid, which can be distilled in kind of the same way you distill alcohol. Cooling down air to such a low temperature requires enormous amounts of energy, meaning a lot of CO2 released into the atmosphere. Just imagine how much energy your kitchen freezer uses, and that can only reach negative 18 degrees. If our whole world depended only on renewable energy sources, this wouldn't be such a big issue. But that is not the case today, or even for many decades ahead. So, what should we do? We can't reduce the amount of oxygen we use. The demand for oxygen is actually expected to rise almost 7% in the next five years. And this summer, the World Health Organization warned of a possible oxygen shortage in hospitals due to COVID-19. We could try to improve the cryogenic distillation process, but that wouldn't improve the energy consumption very much. We need a new and completely different way to produce pure oxygen gas industrially, worldwide. What if we, instead of using all that energy on liquefying the air, could just filter out the oxygen from air directly? This is where ceramic membranes come into play. So, what are membranes and how do they work? Imagine that you're standing outside a nightclub looking at the people inside dancing. Between you and a night of fun is a security guard blocking the way with a VIP guest list in his hands. And you're lucky and get through, because you're on the list, but most of the others will have to stay out in the cold. I am trying to make just such a security guard, working at a nightclub where the people in line are air. And it looks like this. It may look small, but it may have a huge impact on the oxygen industry one day. This is a ceramic membrane, and the only thing on its VIP guest list is oxygen. This membrane is made out of a, of a material that conducts oxygen. By using this material, we can filter out oxygen from the air directly without cooling it down, saving a lot of energy, and therefore also CO2 and money. If we have air on one side, an empty container on the other, and this membrane in between, oxygen will willingly go through the membrane and into the container, resulting in 100% pure oxygen gas ready for use. We do then not need to use all that energy on cooling down the air or distilling that liquid afterwards. Ceramic membranes made from oxygen conductive materials have been researched a lot over the years and was a pretty, pretty hot topic in the 90s. But so far, the result has been membranes with either poor stability or low effectivity. Their materials need temperatures as high as 1,000 degrees to function properly. And at those temperatures, the materials degrade and the membrane just falls apart. For many years, people have tried to improve these materials, either by making them more stable over time or improving their efficiency. While these materials are somewhat getting better, there's still a long way to go. As material scientists, we always try to make better materials, either by improving what we have or finding new ones that can change everything around us. Finding these new and revolutionary materials is not simple, because understanding what you need when you don't have it is difficult, and it's easier to just try to better what you're already working on. 
The world of ceramic membranes for oxygen production need to look outside the box for new possible materials. What I am working on is a completely new type of material, never been used for these kinds of membranes before. It has no problems with standing higher temperatures, it is much more stable and should also function at lower temperatures than the normal materials. But how do we know that it works? Before making a membrane out of this, we need to test the properties of the material. You wouldn't like to go to a nightclub if there, for one, wasn't enough space for you on the guest list, and two, the queue was so slow that you never got to go inside. The same is also applicable for ceramic membranes. The more space there is for oxygen inside the material, the more can pass through at the same time. And the faster it goes through, the more efficient it becomes. One way to determine how much oxygen can be inside the material at the same time is thermogravimetric analysis. And this sounds more complicated than it is. Thermo means heat, and gravimetry means measuring weight. So what you do is heat up the material and see how the weight changes. When oxygen enters the material, it becomes heavier. And when oxygen leaves the material, it becomes lighter. This way, we can figure out how much oxygen is inside the material at the same time at different temperatures. And this, this is key. Temperature is very closely related to energy. And the harder it is, the more energy oxygen has and the faster it can move. Having a membrane that is efficient at letting oxygen through is a necessity to be able to compete with the traditional oxygen process. But having a security guard who's really quick at checking people off the guest list doesn't really help if all the guests are slow as snails. These three cylinders represent the amount of oxygen inside the material at room temperature, medium temperature, and higher temperatures. We can see that there is definitely the most space for oxygen at room temperature, but at that temperature, oxygen has zero energy. Oh, it really doesn't want to move, and the thought of going through the membrane is out of the option. But as the temperature rises, so does its energy, and at higher temperatures, oxygen is practically sprinting through the material. It's these high-energy oxygen atoms that we would most like to use, as a faster transport of oxygen means a more efficient membrane. But if my membrane only works at higher temperatures, then we're back at square one when it comes to saving energy. We need to compromise, and rather use the fairly active oxygen at medium temperature. That way, it's still efficient enough to use, and we're saving a lot of energy. But according to the results, we don't have that much oxygen to use at that temperature. And that's a problem, or a challenge. And luckily, there is a solution. We material scientists are in fact allowed to do something that no one else should do. Doping. <laughs> Legal doping. And we find our steroids in the periodic table. By adding a small amount of an element that is not present in the material to begin with, we can enhance wanted properties and reduce unwanted ones. Doping is one of material science's biggest tricks and is being used everywhere. So let's put my security guard on steroids. After doping the material, we test it again. And we see that we increase the amount of oxygen that can be inside it at both room temperature, medium temperatures, and higher temperatures. These oxygen here are the key to making these membranes a reality. And now we have enough of them to make the membrane be at its best performance. But making a membrane out of this material is not very straightforward. For oxygen to be able to pass through the material, it has to push itself forward in between the other atoms. And to make it worse, oxygen is pretty lazy. If the membrane is too thick, then it can't be bothered to go through. Therefore, these membranes need to be thinner than a human hair. But having such a thin sheet of material wouldn't be very durable in itself and would probably just break when you try to touch it. This whole thing here is actually not the membrane. Only the top layer of it is. If we look at it using an electron microscope, it looks like this. Kind of looks like the frosting on top of a very dry and hard cake. This recipe for this frosting is still a secret. So far, this project is at, is at the stage where we're trying to make a functioning prototype out of this membrane. 
and if it works, then it can both be used for large-scale oxygen production and for vital oxygen concentrators in hospitals. Science is about making the world a better place for all of us. Sometimes that means improving what we do one small step at a time. Other times we need to think outside the box and start over. And the oxygen industry needs a fresh start. We will need more and more oxygen in the years to come. And this is not a resource that can be exchanged for something else. By using these new membranes, we are not just thinking outside the box. We are recreating the box using a completely new material. Thank you. <laughs>